Hi, welcome back to Dr. Donovan Medicine Made Easy, where in today's video we're going to be discussing key things you need to know about a common medication that is prescribed to treat gout and kidney stones known as allopurinol. This is also called by its brand names Xyloric and Eurycto. In this video we're going to cover what allopurinol is and how it works, who can and cannot take allopurinol, how and when to take it, what to do if you accidentally miss a dose, potential side effects, advice if you're pregnant or if you're breastfeeding, as well as possible interactions with other medications. As ever, each section is timestamped, so please feel free to skip ahead if there's a particular section that you're interested in. So let's start off by understanding what allopurinol is, as well as how it works. Well, if you produce too much uric acid, or if your kidneys don't filter out enough, then it can build up and cause tiny, sharp crystals to form in and around your joints. Now, this is called gout. Allopurinol works by lowering the levels of uric acid in the blood, and it's for this reason that it's used to treat gout as well as kidney stones. It may also be prescribed if you're having certain types of cancer treatment, because some of these treatments can cause a buildup of uric acid. So now we know what allopurinol is, as well as how it works, well who can and can't take it? So allopurinol can be taken by most adults and some children, but it might not be suitable for certain people, especially if you've ever had an allergic reaction to allopurinol, if you've got problems with your liver or kidneys, if you're currently experiencing an attack of gout, if you've got thyroid problems, if you're of Han Chinese, Thai or Korean origin, then it may not be suitable. And again, if any of these apply to you, it's best to speak to your doctor before starting this medicine. So now let's take a look at the practical aspects of how and when to take it. So allopurinol comes as tablets, and the usual dose is between 100 milligrams to 300 milligrams a day. Normally you'll be started on a low dose, and if you're managing this okay without any side effects, then it can be up titrated accordingly. Now it is important to follow your doctor's advice on the specific dose and when to take it, but try to take it at the same time each day. If you are prescribed allopurinol, then it's likely that you're going to need to have regular blood tests to monitor your uric acid levels. Now sometimes, if your uric acid level doesn't come down enough despite the allopurinol treatment, your doctor may increase the dose up to 900 milligrams daily in severe cases. When taking the tablets, it's best to swallow them whole and not to chew them. Try to take them with a glass of water and preferably with food. Now normally allopurinol is taken once a day, but if you're taking a high dose, then it may be advised that this is split to be taken twice a day. So now let's cover what you should do if you forget to take a dose by accident. So if you forget to take allopurinol and you normally take it once a day, then take the missed dose as soon as you remember. If you don't remember until the following day, then just skip the missed dose. And it's important to remember never to take a double dose to make up for a missed dose. Now, if you accidentally forget to take allopurinol, then you should seek medical advice if you begin to feel sick or vomit, if you develop diarrhea, if you're feeling dizzy or tired, as well as having headaches and stomach pains. Normally, things will be okay, but again, it's best to seek medical attention and speak to your doctor if you do have any concerns. So now let's move on and talk about side effects. And like all medicines, allopurinol can cause side effects, although not everybody gets them. The most common side effects are feeling sick or being sick, and the risk of this developing can be reduced by drinking plenty of fluids and taking allopurinol with food. If you're struggling to keep down fluids because you're feeling or being very sick, then you should seek medical attention. Now, there are some more serious side effects of allopurinol, which we're going to cover briefly here. So if you notice a skin rash or redness, you should tell a doctor straight away, because this can develop potentially into a life-threatening skin condition called Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Now this is a rare side effect, but it's important to be aware of it. Now Stevens-Johnson syndrome causes flu-like symptoms, and if you have fair skin, it can be followed by a red or purple rash that spreads and forms blisters. The affected skin eventually dies and peels off. It's more likely to happen in the first eight weeks of taking allopurinol, or when the dose is increased quickly. It can also happen if allopurinol is stopped suddenly for a few days and then restarted the same dose as before. So if you are going to suddenly stop taking allopurinol then restart taking it again, it's best to seek the advice of a pharmacist or your doctor who might advise you to reduce the dose and then increase it slowly. It's also best to not start taking allopurinol within two weeks of having a viral infection, a vaccination or a rash caused by something else. Now other side effects are rare, 
but you should see your doctor if you get yellow skin or the whites of your eyes go yellow because these could potentially be signs of a liver problem. If you get a high temperature, sore throat and swollen glands, or you feel generally unwell, this could mean there are problems potentially with the white blood cells. Also, if you have bruising for no obvious reason or easy bleeding gums when brushing your teeth, you should also speak to your doctor if you're unusually thirsty, going to the toilet to pee a lot, you have weight loss without trying or blurred vision. These could be signs of diabetes. Now, in rare cases, it's also possible to have a serious allergic reaction known as anaphylaxis to allopurinol. This causes lip and tongue swelling as well as face swelling. And if you develop this, you must seek medical attention immediately as it can be life-threatening. It's important to note that these are not all of the side effects of allopurinol and for a full list of side effects, please do make sure you read the information leaflet inside of the medicine box. So now that we're coming towards the end of the video, let's take a look at pregnancy and breastfeeding. Now, there's not enough published evidence to be able to comment on the safety of the use of allopurinol in pregnancy, so it's generally not recommended to take allopurinol if you are pregnant. If you're going to think about trying for a baby and you currently take allopurinol, then you should speak to your doctor because they may be able to recommend alternative medicines that are safer for you. Similarly, if you take allopurinol and you're going to breastfeed, then speak to your doctor first. Finally, some medicines and allopurinol can interfere with each other and increase the chances of you having side effects. You should therefore tell your doctor or your pharmacist if you're taking any of the following medicines before you start taking allopurinol. So firstly, aspirin or any blood thinning medication, things such as warfarin, and immunosuppressant medications, which you may be taking if you have a condition such as rheumatoid arthritis or if you've had a transplant, as well as tablets that make you wee more. So things like furosemide or certain medicines used to treat high blood pressure. You should also tell your doctor or pharmacist if you're taking any other medicines, including herbal medicines, vitamins, or supplements from over the counter that they don't prescribe. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something new. If you did, please remember to like it, leave me a comment if you've got any other thoughts or you'd like to share your experiences of using this medicine, and please consider subscribing to the channel for weekly medical education videos. Please also check out the references and resources that I've used to make this video, which are in the description box. And I must stress, for medico-legal reasons, this has been designed as an education and information video, not an individual clinical advice video. If you do have any concerns or questions about allopurinol related to yourself, then please do speak to your own doctor. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, bye.